Right now in southern Italy, Campi Flagre is shaking again. In the last 24 hours, monitors log 30 earthquakes, from magnitude 0.1 up to 3.1, most of them shallow beneath the Pozzuoli area. People can feel the stronger jolts, but so far there are no confirmed reports of major damage and no change in the official alert level. Here is the important part. Scientists say the caldera does not yet show the physical conditions needed for an eruption on its own. But the swarm keeps the ground under pressure, and the next hours are about watching what changes, not guessing. This morning in Europe, the latest daily summary shows Campi Flegre recorded 30 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. The magnitudes range from 0.1 to 3.1. That is a high count for a single day. It also means the strongest event in this window stayed at 3.1, not higher. Here is the important part. In the last eight hours, there has been no widely reported quake at or above 3.5. There has also been no announced change to the official civil protection alert level for Campi Flegre. So this is not a sudden spike. It is ongoing pressure that has not released. To understand why 30 and 24 hours matters, we have to connect it to what started last week. On Oro 6th of January 2026, INGV reported that a seismic swarm was in progress at Campi Flegre. In the days that followed, the stronger shocks in this sequence reached 3.1, then 2.9, then 2.6. Reports from the area described shallow sources at only a few kilometers deep, and shaking felt across multiple neighborhoods around Pozzuoli and nearby districts. No major damage was reported in the local coverage tied to the 2.6 event on Oro 9 January. That is the pattern we are watching. Frequent small quakes, a few stronger jolts mixed in, depths that stay shallow, and a swarm that keeps returning instead of stopping. In a caldera like Campi Flegre, that kind of persistence is the story. Now we widen the frame, because a swarm only makes sense when you see what sits underneath it. Campi Flegre is a caldera system. The shaking is not random. It is tied to bradycism, the slow rise and fall of the ground driven by pressure, changes below the surface. In the first week of January 2026, INGV confirmed a new swarm was underway. Local reporting then described a clear sequence. On Duryuan, Kira January, a magnitude 2.6 struck at 1744, with the epicenter between Pozzoli and Arco Felici, about three kilometers deep. People felt it not only in the core area, but also in nearby districts such as Pianura, Quarto, Fori Grota, and Bagnoli. Minutes earlier, smaller microshocks were reported. The key detail is the depth. Around three kilometers is shallow for the system. Shallow quakes are more likely to be felt at the surface, even when the magnitude is modest. And then we get to what makes this week different from a normal seismic day. The activity is not isolated. Multiple outlets have described it as part of the ongoing Brady seismic crisis. That wording matters. It points to a long running process, not a one-time event. It also explains why the daily count can stay high even when the top magnitude does not climb. Here is the important part. A report like 30 earthquakes in 24 hours is a snapshot of pressure still moving through the same zone. It tells us the system is active. It does not by itself prove an eruption is next. The correct question for the next hours is simple. Are the quakes getting stronger? Are they getting shallower? And is the pattern spreading to new areas inside the caldera? In the last 12 to 24 hours, a new scientific update has shaped how Italy is talking about Campi Flegre. Multiple major outlets reported on a study by INGV in the University of Geneva, published on 12th of January, 2026. The core message is direct. The current state of the caldera is not enough by itself to trigger an eruption. The researchers base this on physical and thermal modeling and on what is known about the magma mass present today. Their conclusion is that an eruption scenario would require new magma accumulation over many decades. It would need a much larger volume and higher pressure in the shallow system. That is not what current observations indicate. Here is the important part. The same study explains why the ground can keep deforming and why earthquakes can keep repeating without an eruption. It points to a weak layer at roughly three to four kilometers depth. This layer is easier to crack and more permeable. It can store magma and fluids, allow them to move, and create stress changes that show up as uplift and seismic swarms. In this setting, some intrusions can stall.
Pressure can drop quickly. The crust can deform in a way that absorbs energy instead of forcing magma upward to the surface. This is consistent with what has been described for the broader Brady Seismic Crisis. The system can be supplied from depth. Fluids can build pressure. The ground can rise. Earthquakes can cluster. But the measurable parameters still do not show a critical shallow magma volume that would make an eruption the most likely near-term outcome. So the message from this research is not a guarantee. It is a current assessment. It says the caldera is active and under pressure, it says the swarm can continue, but it also says that right now the conditions required for an eruption are not seen in the data being discussed. Now we add the national context. It shows why Campi Flegre remains a focus for monitors in Italy. In the 2025 national summary cited in recent reporting, INGV recorded 15,159 earthquakes in Italy and nearby areas. That is more than 43 earthquakes per day on average. It is about one earthquake every 33 minutes. Campi Flagre is different because the activity is concentrated under a caldera and under populated zones. The sequence is also repeated. Multiple swarms occurred during the year. Many events were shallow, only a few kilometers deep inside the caldera area. Two dates are the key reference points for the current Brady Seismic Crisis. On 13th of March 2025 and on $30 June 2025, Campi Flegre recorded magnitude 4.6 events. These were described as the largest shocks in the crisis up to that time. They set the upper end of what the area has recently experienced. Here is the important part. When we connect those 2025 peaks to the early January 2026 swarm and then to today's daily count, the pattern becomes clear. The area is in a phase of elevated seismicity linked to Bradyseism. The activity continues over weeks and months, not minutes. At the same time, the most current snapshot still shows a ceiling at 3.1 in the last 24 hours. In the last eight hours, there has been no widely reported event at or above 3.5. There has also been no announced change to the official alert level in the information you provided. That is why the correct description today is ongoing pressure with frequent small quakes, not a confirmed escalation. Now we move to what the audience needs to hold on to as the situation develops. In the last eight hours, the newest usable update is the daily earthquake summary showing 30 events in 24 hours with magnitudes from 0.1 to 3.1. The count is high. The maximum is still 3.1. That combination points to persistence without a clear jump in strength. Here is the important part. There is no sign in the information you provided of an official change in the alert level. There is also no widely reported new quake at or above 3.5 in the same eight-hour window. So we are not describing a new emergency declaration. We are describing a system that stays active and is watched closely. The immediate background is also clear. INGV reported a swarm in progress starting ear 6 January 2026. In the days that followed, the stronger events in the sequence reached 3.1, then 2.9, then 2.6. Local reporting described shallow sources around a few kilometers deep. It also described shaking felt across multiple districts around the Pozzoli area. The 09 January 2.6 event was described with no major damage in the local coverage you cited. And the wider scientific message from the last day matters for how we interpret all of this. The new INGV and University of Geneva work published 12th of January 2026 says the current physical state of the caldera is not enough to trigger an eruption on its own. It says an eruption scenario would require new magma accumulation over decades and a much larger shallow volume and pressure than what is being discussed now. At the same time, it explains why swarms can continue. A weak layer around three to four kilometers depth can crack and store magma and fluids, producing deformation and repeated earthquakes without forcing magma to the surface. So the picture at this moment is balanced but serious. Elevated seismicity continues. The swarm can persist. The strongest event in the last day stays at 3.1. And the current research message is that an immediate eruption is not supported by the conditions described. Now we stay with what can be measured next. The first marker is magnitude. In the last 24 hours, the ceiling in your data is 3.1. If that ceiling rises, it is a change that can be tracked. The second marker is depth. The recent reported events in this sequence are shallow around a few kilometers. 
If new reports show a consistent shift to even shallower depths, the shaking at the surface can be felt more strongly, even without a large magnitude. The third marker is location. If the swarm stops repeating in the same zone and begins clustering in a different part of the caldera, that is also a shift that matters. Here is the important part. A high daily count alone does not define the next outcome. It defines activity. The study you cited, published 12 out of January 2026 by INGV in the University of Geneva, says the current physical conditions of the caldera are not enough to trigger an eruption on their own. It says an eruption scenario would require new magma accumulation over decades and a much larger shallow volume and pressure than what is indicated now. At the same time, it explains why swarms can persist. A weak layer around three to four kilometers depth can store magma and fluids, and it can produce deformation and repeated earthquakes without forcing magma to reach the surface. So the short summary for this hour is precise. Campi flagre remains in a phase of elevated seismicity linked to bradycism. The daily count reported is 30 earthquakes in 24 hours. The maximum magnitude reported is 3.1. And in the last eight hours, your data shows no widely reported event at or above 3.5 and no announced change to the alert level. This morning in Europe, the latest daily summary reports 30 earthquakes at Campi flagre in the last 24 hours. The magnitudes range from 0.1 to 3.1. In the last eight hours, the information you provided shows no widely reported event at or above 3.5. It also shows no announced change to the official alert level. Here is the important part. Research reported widely in the last 24 hours from INGV and the University of Geneva and published on 12th of January, 2026, says the caldera's current physical conditions are not enough to trigger an eruption on their own. It says an eruption scenario would require new magma accumulation over decades and a much larger shallow volume and pressure than what is indicated now. It also explains why swarms can persist. A weak layer around three to four kilometers depth can store magma and fluids and produce deformation and repeated earthquakes without forcing magma to reach the surface. So the closing update is precise. Elevated seismicity continues. The daily count reported is 30 events. The maximum magnitude reported is 3.1. The current scientific assessment described in your data does not support an immediate eruption.